Hi, my name is Dean Wingerchuk. I'm a professor of neurology at Mayo Clinic in Arizona, and I'm going to discuss with you today the topic of multiple sclerosis and provide a general overview. Multiple sclerosis, or MS as it's usually called, is a condition that affects primarily young people but can occur at almost any age. It is uh, thought to affect about 400,000 people in the United States. And at Mayo Clinic, where we have several neurologists that specialize in multiple sclerosis, we see over 2,000 people every year uh, and help them manage this disease and achieve an accurate diagnosis. We don't know the cause of multiple sclerosis, but we think it's probably an autoimmune disease, which means that the immune system, which usually is looking for infections and other uh, uh, foreign substances or uh, uh, targets to attack, goes awry and starts to damage its own tissue, specifically the brain, the optic nerves for vision, and the spinal cord. We don't know why this happens, but it's presumed to be a combination of genetic risk factors, a pattern of genes that people are born with that puts them at more or uh, less susceptibility to the disease, but then also the effect of environmental factors. And uh, there's a lot of intensive investigation going on now to determine what factors in the environment, in fact, um, trigger this disease. Leading candidates are viruses, including the Epstein-Barr virus, which causes mononucleosis, as well as vitamin D, uh, the possibility that deficiency in vitamin D, especially early in life, might also predispose people to multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis causes neurological symptoms, such as imbalance, numbness, tingling, or loss of vision, that tends to come and go in episodes or attacks. Usually after those attacks, people get symptomatic improvement, they get better. Uh, but over time, some but not all people uh, develop lingering disability or residual problems that stay with them. The purpose of treatment, therefore, <clears throat> is to try to interrupt these processes. It's to try to uh, improve the symptoms of an individual attack, to speed up the recovery from attacks, and uh, most importantly, to reduce the chances of having an attack in the first place, uh, and that should prevent people uh, from uh, developing disability in the long run. Currently, we have a number of therapies which are approved by the FDA uh, to treat multiple sclerosis. These include uh, interferon preparations and other injectable therapies that reduce attacks and reduce the number of new lesions or spots that are seen on a MRI scan of the brain or spinal cord. Uh, by doing that, these drugs appear to keep people in better shape. There's a lot of research going on now to discover uh, the mechanism of how damage occurs in multiple sclerosis so that we can then discover new treatments that are more effective and better tolerated than what we have now. Some of the exciting things that are happening now are the impending uh, approval of the first oral medications to treat multiple sclerosis. Uh, instead of injectable medications, these will be pills. Uh, they uh, alter immune system functions in a way that reduce the chances of having more attacks and again prevent uh, the progression of the disease. Uh, there's a lot of work in understanding um, the uh, treatment of symptoms and how to enhance quality of life. Uh, there was the recent approval by the FDA of a drug called uh, famperidine or dalfamperidine, which assists people in walking better. That was a major advance in the treatment of the disease. And finally, the next generation um, or realm of uh, research is understanding mechanisms of repair of the nervous system. So you've all heard about the promise of stem cell research and what that might do for diseases like Alzheimer's disease or spinal cord injury. The same is true for multiple sclerosis. We think that stem cells have uh, the potential to uh, treat the fundamental immune system problem that we think is uh, causing multiple sclerosis and perhaps ultimately lead one day to its cure. But one could also consider using stem cells in a way to grow new neurons or new support cells for neurons, and that could repair damage in people who are already affected with multiple sclerosis. These are things that investigators are working on now and are the more intermediate goals that we're working towards over the next uh, few years. Thank you for your attention today. If you have any other questions, please consult mayoclinic.com.